Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of explaining model kits and how to make them. Here is the instructions uh, from the kit I opened in part 1 um, and today I'm going to be explaining the process of cutting off the parts, how to do it cleanly, how to, do, how to clean up those parts and how to put it together. Here is the part I'm going to cut out. Now, before we cut it out, there are some things that we can do. Uh, we can put stickers on, we can do the panel lining process, uh, we can do painting even. But it's easier to cut the part out first and then to do those things. So, we're going to take our large cutters and we're going to cut at the top here. We're not going to cut close, we're going to cut far away from the gate. And this might take a bit of force. And it might go flying off like that, that's okay. As long as it didn't hit anyone in the eye. Now, second step will be to take our flush cutters and we're going to cut very close to the part. But we're not going to go flush. I know this is called flush cutters. The only reason they're called flush cutters is because they're flat. You can also call them flat cutters. So we're going to cut very close to the part here. You can see there's still a little bit of a nub there. Now this is what we usually call a nub mark. Uh, extruded part of the plastic that has come from the gates. Now we're going to take a knife. You can also use a file or you can use sanding paper. Now a file uh, will probably also need to have a little bit of sanding paper as well because you can't get files at a certain grit, whereas sandpaper you can get a very, very, very fine grit. You can get pretty fine grit uh, files but you, you want to finish it off with sandpaper as well. Um, the only problem with using sandpaper is you're going to have a little bit of a difference on your plastic finish of your sanded part as opposed to your uh, normal part which is usually the semi-gloss satin finish. Uh, this is actually kind of glossy but I'd say it's more satin. Um, so I'm gonna just use the knife um, and show you how close you can get with the knife, how clean you can get it um, and then we can also look at the file and sandpaper later. So, starting off with the knife, you want to slowly point it outwards. You don't want to dig in because you're going to gouge the plastic out and you're going to leave a nasty mark. So you want to face outwards and slowly work your way down. And then you can always use your fingernail or your fingers to feel how much plastic is left there. And then slowly but surely make your way down. Switching your direction you're cutting from. Only taking a little bit away at a time. And now that actually feels flush but you'll notice there's a mark there. Now there are ways to get rid of that mark. Um, this is actually because of the stress that you sometimes put on your plastic when you're cutting them off. Um, it's very hard to avoid, um, even master model makers get that mistake. Um, there's a, there is something we can do for that, um, and I will show you right now. Now what I'm about to show you might be a little controversial in the model making sphere. Because it's probably not the best thing to do, but it's something that you can do. And it's a cheap and easy method to get rid of one of these marks. And it doesn't always work, but it sometimes does. Especially on darker plastic, and that's to use a tiny bit of extra thin cement. Now, like I said, this might not work, but sometimes it does. You want to Get rid of most of the liquid. And then you want to put a tiny, tiny little bit 
right on there. Now this might not work. Um, and why this is controversial is because this actually mounts the plastic a bit. And you have to be very careful with it. But we're going to let that dry. And you don't want to touch it until it's dry. Um, and like I said, it might not even work. So I would avoid doing this. But it is something that you can do if you want a quick and easy way to get rid of... Uh, like stress from your nub marks. Um, now I'm going to also show you something else you can do which you probably shouldn't do um, and that's specifically if you have something like these god hands, some very very sharp fine uh, flat or flush cutters um, and that's to actually just cut right up on the part with them and these can leave a pretty good finish now that got pretty close, in fact I can even, it's so sharp, I can get away with doing a little bit more, but you can always gouge out your parts that way, which I might have done a little bit there. So that's why I wouldn't uh, recommend using those. Something else you can do is scrape with your knife. And this is just to make the part more flat. Um, but this will mark, like, mar the part it'll make it more white um, and again I'm going to use a little bit of this cement here to get rid of that whitening um, and we can see the top part that's pretty much dry now but it is glossy so it isn't something I'd recommend doing but it is something if you're feeling lazy you can do now going on to some darker plastic here, this will highlight it even more. So I'm going to get pretty close, but I'm not going to go right onto the part. I'm just going to get about as close as I'm comfortable getting without actually, you know, digging into the part. There's definitely something there. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use some sandpaper. Right, I've got a bunch of different grits here, and I'm going to say start from... Uh, well, I should use the God Hand ones. This is made by the same people that make the pliers. Um, so we're going to start from the lowest, which is 120. Um, and I'd recommend getting a small pot or jar. Um, I'm actually going to use this paint cleaning pot here. I'm going to put some water in it because you're going to want to wet sand this. You should try to sand things wet as much as possible because you're going to get a lot of dust coming off the parts and it's not good to breathe that in. Um, it's also easier to see what progress you're getting on your parts and it also makes your sandpaper last longer as well. So we're going to try and focus there. There we go. Slowly sand that part. Try not to sand too much of the area around it. So that's smooth-ish now. I know it's not going to have the best finish, so we're going to move up a grip. Um, let's see, next it's 240. This is a part you could probably get away with not worrying about all of this, since it's such a small part that you're not going to really see. But if you're a perfectionist, then you're going to want to do this. Now the downside of this is it takes a long time, especially if you're working on a kit with a uh, harder saw sort of plastic. It definitely can take a decent amount of time. And then we'll finish it off with this 800 grit here. Now you can even get polishing sticks as well, which can um. I think I've got here, here we go. Which basically just buff the part out and make it uh, glossy again. But it will still have a slight color difference because you can never truly get to that microscopic level. But um, here you go. That is pretty consistent and smooth now.
so let's show it with a file. Um, and I will be using a little bit of sandpaper, so I'm just gonna get close. In fact, I think I cut that too perfectly. <laughs> let's see if I can show that. Uh, here we go. I don't know how well it's going to come up. You can kind of see it. There we go. Upper middle. You can see there's a little white mark there. I'm going to take a file. Let's see. They're pretty fine, these files. I want a wet sand as well for this. I can't actually really feel it. Um, but I will try and show you with the files. Uh, you want to get as flat as possible. Um, and you can see it, it's quite scratched up now. Because uh, that's not going to show up on camera very easily at all. There we go. You can see that's quite scratched up looking now. Um, that's because the file isn't the finest thing. So that's when you'd want to take it f to the sandpaper and then uh, slowly work it. And just have a look off camera. We can move on to the next bit. And just try to, on the finer grits you can move omnidirectional, but in your earlier grits you want to stick to one direction. Um, there's some actual thick uh, scratches there, so I'm going to reset and go from the top. Sanding, and work my way down. Um, so yeah, I'd only really recommend using files on stuff like ABS plastic. Now your runners or your trees or your parts will have listed what they're made of. Most of the companies will have it listed what they're made of. Um, and if you see ABS, that's gonna be a softer plastic. Um, and I'd recommend using a file on that. I wouldn't recommend jumping straight into sandpaper. Because those knobs are going to be very hard to uh, to deal with with just sandpaper. Um, and then regular runners and screws are made of uh, like polystyrene, polyethylene, whatever. Like pla is what most people call it. Plastic sheets, um, which are going to be uh, easier to work with with sandpaper. Now we're going to polish this. Now you can get really into this. But. You can see. That it's shiny but you can also see it is slightly whitened. Slightly lighter than the rest of the plastic around it. Um, which is why I don't usually sand so often, only if I'm going to really paint the kit. I'm actually going to paint this kit, but we'll get to that later. But that's basically the, the basics on, like, cutting the parts out and, like, preparing them. There's the different, like, tools you can use for it. And, uh, hopefully this helps... Under helps you understand you watching understand uh, like the different ways you can cut fingers out and clean them up and uh, hopefully it will it'll make your model kits look better uh, that's all for this one see you in the next part